fill the superintendent role. Details still ahead. And a traffic update. Tech stop planning some road closures starting tonight. Stephen Cavazos has that information coming up. Live from KZ12. The news at noon starts right now. That thunderstorm overnight taking an especially heavy toll on one man looking for shelter. San Antonio police say that he was killed when he was swept away by rainwater in a drainage ditch. It happened near Highway 281 and Bitters Road. And as Katrina Weber tells us, it seems the weather caught him off guard as he tried to bunk down outdoors. A bridge was no shelter from the rain. San Antonio police say a 44 year old man who tried to make his home beneath it became a victim of the bad weather. They began searching the area near Highway 281 and Bitters Road after 1130 last night. Officers were told a man was swept away from a homeless encampment, then carried off into this ditch by fast moving water. While this may not look like much now, you can tell from the water markings that the water here got quite deep. And you can tell the current was strong just by all the debris here. There's everything from shopping carts to bicycle parts to leveled greenery. When officers on the ground came up empty handed, they had to rely on their helicopter for help. They say that is how they spotted the man in the water closer to Wurzbach Parkway. But even CPR couldn't save him. The job of trying to find his next of kin was left to the medical examiner. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Looking outside with live cam, a very different day from what we've been having lately. We even got some rain. Well, absolutely. We did north of Highway 90 late last night, and you can feel the humidity outside right now. That humidity is palpable. I want to talk for a moment about those who did get rain uh, last night and talk about rainfall amounts. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this is a great example of the kind of rain that we will have as a possibility through about Tuesday afternoon. Afternoon, isolated in nature. Let's go back a little bit because I do want to show that graphic. It, uh, my graphics have uh, have a bit of a hiccup, and I want to get this right for you guys at home. So let's go ahead and take a look here at these graphics and the rainfall amounts. You can see that north of Highway 90, uh, areas like Chavano Park got about an inch of rain. Even JBSA Camp Bullis uh, only got about a five hundredths of an inch of rainfall, but that still is helping those firefighters out there fighting that fire. Selma area got a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. Holotus got a little bit more than a quarter of an inch of rain. And again, this kind of rain is what we could expect over the next couple of days isolated in nature and even can pulse up and become severe. We saw a severe thunderstorm warning in uh, Bear County last night and into Guadalupe and Comal County and we saw about quarter inch hail. So looking at rain chances, this is what we're going to talk about in the forecast. Although chance for rain is low Tuesday uh, and even today, if a storm develops, it could become stronger severe. So I'm going to walk you through that. We're going to talk about the future cast, what you can expect for the rest of your Monday and through tomorrow with that small but significant chance for showers and storms tomorrow. David Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. And as she just mentioned, uh, that fire over at Camp Bullis, the smoke could be seen for miles this weekend, regardless of where you live in Bear, Comal or Kendall County. If you look toward JBSA Camp Bullis, crews were continuing to fight that brush fire. And at this time, the fire now 50 percent contained but it has burned up 2,800 acres. Sarah Coast has been at Camp Bullis covering the story all morning. She tells us the latest on where the fire control right now may be and what JBSA fire officials are saying about how the fire got started. A big smoke plume could be seen across several counties on Saturday, dry and windy conditions, not making it easy for Joint Base San Antonio and surrounding agencies to fight the brush fire burning inside Camp Bullis. How the fire started, that's still in question. Saturday had a red flag warning. JBSA officials say there was an authorized training mission taking place in a demolition area of Camp Bullis when the fire started Saturday around 2.30 in the afternoon. We asked exactly what the training mission involved, but JBSA officials declined to say because of their investigation, and information from that investigation won't be available for a couple of weeks. There are no injuries and no occupied buildings or structures that have been damaged by the flames. Active service members on site have been moved to safe locations as fire response efforts continue. 
At one point, nearby residents in the neighborhoods of southwest Comal County worried as volunteer evacuations were ordered. Those have since been lifted, fire and JBSA fire contained. officials say uh, they don't believe crews. the fire will spread outside of Camp Bullis borders. Favorable weather conditions of humidity, less wind, and even rain overnight will also help firefighters contain those flames. You know, right after the sun came up, we did see Travis County fire trucks pull into the entrance here at JBSA Camp Bullis. So we do know that multiple agencies continue to help JBSA fire crews fight this blaze. From outside JBSA Camp Bullis, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Thank you. This noon, San Antonio police are still trying to figure out the location where a man was shot and why. Officers say around 4.30 this morning, a man drove himself to a hospital near the quarry after someone shot him while he was driving. Police tell us they think the victim was hit near an apartment complex just north of North Star Mall. At this time, officers do not have any suspects and no word on the victim's condition. In the day ahead, an announcement about new leadership at San Antonio Inter Inter Independent rather, School District. SAISD expected to name its lone finalist for the superintendent position tonight during a board meeting. The district has been searching for a permanent replacement since Pedro Martinez announced that he was leaving to become the CEO of Chicago Public Schools back in September of last year. And traffic alert, TxDOT is set to close some roads overnight. Stephen Cavasso shows us what drivers are going to need to know tomorrow morning. If you are an overnight or early morning commuter, make sure to plan your commute ahead of time. According to TxDOT, there will be several closures taking place this week. Let's go ahead and start here off of US 281 on the north side of San Antonio. Drivers, you can expect some signage installation and lane striping to take place. This is current and will wrap up on Thursday, April 14th. Keep in mind, this is overnight from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. What you can expect there is an alternating northbound main lane closure at Loop 1604 to Stone Oak Parkway. So again, watch out over there. Let's Let's go ahead and head over to Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. Some bridge work has been current and is expected to wrap on Monday, April 18th. This is again overnight, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Drivers there, what you can expect is an alternating main lane closure in both directions from Marbach Road to Ingram Road. One last drive over here off Loop 1604 on the northwest side. Bridge construction has been current and will wrap on Friday, April 22nd. Again, overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Drivers there can expect a full closure of the Kyle Seal Parkway at Loop 1604 intersection, including the turnarounds. So bring out those phones and scan this QR code. That will give you a full list of the closures that are in your area and, of course, have the very latest on your commute. Guys, back to you. The Spurs have wrapped up the regular season. Now it's a one and done situation. More coming up in sports. Dozens of top government officials and members of Congress in Washington are recovering from a high-profile outbreak of COVID-19. It's prompting new concerns for President Joe Biden, who has come in contact with a number of people who've recently tested positive. ABC's M1 is in Washington with the latest. Growing concerns in Washington amid a rash of new high-profile COVID-19 infections that have recently come close to President Joe Biden, who's 79 years old. The fact is he could get infected. We hope he doesn't. We do everything we can to protect him. But remember, he's fully vaccinated. Among those who have tested positive are House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Attorney General Merrick Garland, and several members of Congress. Most say they're either asymptomatic or recovering from mild symptoms. It's going to be a person person's decision about the individual risk they're going to take. At least 72 positive cases can be traced back to the Grid Iron Club dinner from last weekend, where attendees needed to show proof of vaccination but didn't have to wear masks indoors. Among those cases, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, who had just announced kids under five would keep wearing masks in schools and daycares. Still, many are criticizing Adams for easing other restrictions too soon, like vaccination requirements indoors. This comes as the nation is seeing an uptick in BA2 cases. The Omicron subvariant now makes up more than 70% of new COVID-19 cases in the U.S. Dr. Ashish Jha, the new coronavirus response coordinator at the White House, says this is a stark reminder to the American people that COVID-19 is still a threat. Those unvaccinated should consider receiving the vaccine and booster. The pandemic isn't over, right? We're still going to see cases of, uh, of this virus spreading. Uh, and we have to continue to be vigilant. We have to continue to be careful. Um, but as long as people are vaccinated and boosted, 
Uh, we now have a lot of treatments available. The White House confirms today that President Biden has once again tested negative for COVID-19 ahead of his scheduled event at the Rose Garden. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Outside with live cam, little humidity, some clouds, and that yellow stuff. Ugh, my Ooh. car was atrocious this morning. <laughs> Same, Ursula. I could really use a car wash, but I'm going to hold off until Wednesday because we do have a chance, a chance for some isolated thunderstorms. The aquifer could use a drink of water. It's down half a foot over the past 24 hours. Now the level is at 648.6 feet above sea level. We're in stage one water restrictions now, but we could very well enter into stage two water restrictions in the next couple of days or so. Now, we were just talking about the oak. The oak is high past 5,000. It is very high and molds are moderate at 910. So not a great day for allergy sufferers out there, whether you suffer from oak, molds or both. Coming up, we'll talk more about that chance for isolated storms in a bit. We're getting hit with all kinds of stuff today, aren't we? I know. I felt so sorry for the people who were behind me on the highway because <laughs> I had all this oak, uh, those oh, little no, catkins were just so flying off my car. And it's okay because people are getting hit by those catkins yeah. by just walking around yeah. outside. You know, we are in the peak of oak season. We could use a little rain to wash out the oak, and we could use a little rain because we're under drought conditions. But unfortunately, our chances for rain in the next 24, 36 hours are going to be isolated in nature. So there will be those who get some rain, and there will be those who do not, unfortunately. Outside right now, you can see that it's still cloudy, 73 degrees, a bit breezy too. Winds from the south southeast at about 11 miles per hour. We've seen a couple of gusts of up to 20 miles per hour earlier today. And honestly, many of us are seeing some sun across the KSAT 12 viewing area. I'm showing you the satellite and temperatures here, and you can see a very clear clearing line. It's 81 in Junction, but 82 in Del Rio. So quite a bit warmer out to the west by nearly 10 degrees in San Antonio right now. It's 76 in Hondo and 75 in Kerrville. And as we zoom in, you can see the areas that are starting to see some sun for the first time today, including Kerrville and Comfort. But it's still overcast around San Antonio at 73, 73 in Converse. It's 71 in Bulverde and 74 in New Braunfels. But that clear in lines, a march in south, and it's going to be moving through San Antonio here uh, in the next couple of hours. So looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, as soon as we see that sun by the mid afternoon, we're going to see temperatures spike up. So we'll probably already be near 80 degrees by 2 p.m. 84 at 3 and 4 p.m. will be reaching our high temperature around that time of 86 for the day. Notice too that I've included a very small measly 10% chance for a stray thunderstorm. That is a possibility but the chance for rain is only 10% okay 90% chance that it's going to stay dry but if one of those storms does pop up it could be on the stronger side like last night and contain up to some quarter sized hail. But again, that is a, a very strong off chance for uh, that storm uh, or two to move through. So again, it's going to be hot this afternoon near 86 degrees and then into the evening. Very mild temperatures are only going to be in the 70s and we'll see clouds build back in in the overnight hours. Elsewhere, we're going to be looking at a high temperature closer to 100 out near Del Rio, 95 in Carrizo Springs, 93 in Hondo. And again, the mid to upper 80s are likely in San Antonio. So let's move on to Tuesday's forecast, because as I said today, we only have a 10 percent chance Tuesday. We have a slightly better percent chance, 30%. And here's what the future cast shows. So firstly, in the morning, we could have some isolated showers and storms in the morning, right around the time of the later morning commute. Now, some of these could be on the strong side, but we don't anticipate severe weather early on Tuesday. And then we'll get a break right around the midday hours. We're going to be looking at clearing skies, and it's actually going to become quite hot. By lunch, we'll be seeing clearing skies. And it's in the afternoon 
afternoon as a dry line approaches that we're going to have to watch carefully because one or two storms could develop around San Antonio and look at the timing too of this close to rush hour. Now these storms could become severe if they do develop. In fact, if a storm does develop in the afternoon, it's likely to become severe, but isolated in nature. So looking at the severe weather threat tomorrow, isolated around San Antonio and the metro area. But if a storm develops, it could produce large hail and damaging wind gusts. Scattered severe storms are more likely up toward Austin and even across parts of the hill country with numerous severe storms likely across the Dallas Fort Worth area up to Oklahoma City and up toward Kansas City. Again, for us, the severe weather threat would be Tuesday afternoon, but we could still have some splash and dash showers in the morning hours on Tuesday as well. All in all, though, the chance for rain is not great. This is not going to be a drought buster for us. 93 for the high tomorrow, so it's going to be a hot day. Windy too. And then Wednesday, windy with gusts up to 35 miles per hour, low humidity, hot temperatures. That is a fire danger day. We know how quickly fires can spread locally around the area with that fire out near Medina Lake and then of course the fire camp Bullis area. It's important for us to to take Wednesday serious too. just about as serious as we take a severe weather threat too, because we do not want to create and spread fires. Otherwise, Easter weekend is going to be hot and humid. Highs will be in the 90s. Very important words there for the next couple of days. Thank you, Sarah. Let's hope it's not a splash and dash for the Spurs on Wednesday. We'll talk about the way they ended the season last night in Dallas. And a Texan is the Masters champion. Hey, Lonnie Walker, the force up some back spads last night, so he finished his season finale on the bench. All the other regulars were back and ready to wrap up the regular season in Dallas against the Mavs. First quarter, Luka Doncic from deep. That is deep. That's a three. Mavs on an 8-0 run. Spurs respond, though. Keldon Johnson with the drive. He had six in the quarter. Spurs up 29-28 after one. Second quarter, DeJounte with the steal. And all alone for the fast break. Slim at home. Spurs up by four. Devin Vassell having a big first half. Had 13 by halftime, including the three. It was tied 59 by half. There were 21 lead changes and nine ties by the break. We go to the third quarter. Mavs open it up. Dorian Finley-Smith with the three. Then Dorian Finley-Smith with the three. And how about another one just for good measure? The story was Doncic, though. He limped to the locker room after he suffered what looked like a non-contact injury during this play right here. He did not return. He had 26 points when the injury occurred. Maz led 97-82 after three. Fourth quarter, Johnson cut the lead down to six late in the quarter. He had a team high 24, but the Mavs made 23 pointers. So here is your final from Dallas last night. Spurs wrap up the regular season, losing the Mavericks 130 to 120. San Antonio finishes the regular season at 34 and 48. We got everything we need. I was very pleased. They played a good game. Uh, you got hit with a three-point barrage in the third quarter, but uh, both ends of the quarter, I thought we played well. We got the minutes for everybody we wanted. Uh, everybody's healthy. So uh, we we got better tonight. We did a lot of good things. How did you think DeJounte looked having not played in about 10 days? Uh, he looked good. You know, he made his free throws. He uh, was confident and let his threes go. He wasn't hesitant. Uh, I think he only made one, mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't really matter. He took them. Uh, he sh showed great pace. He attacked. He played defense. Uh, I think we got him about, I wanted to get about 30 or 32 for him tonight. I'm not sure what he ended up with, but um, he was great. All right, so now it's time for the play in game. Spurs win. They stay in the hunt. Spurs lose. Season's over. It's New Orleans on Wednesday night. Tip off in New Orleans is at 8 30. Final round of the Masters on a beautiful day at Augusta National. Scotty Scheffler started the day with a three-stroke lead on the field. And he reached the top of that leaderboard on just day two. He got things going on the fourth hole with this chip from way down the hill. A little bump and run going straight into the cup. His first birdie of the day puts him at 10 under. Then how about this approach on the par four seventh hole? He got a little backspin working. Oh, sweet. He moves to 11 under. Cameron Smith actually cut Shelter's lead to one early in the round, but had some trouble on 12, putting his tee shot in the water. He hit it, and he knew it. He knew it wasn't going to be good. Smith triple bogeyed the whole finish, tied for third at five under. Rory McIlroy, there's a shot for the ages. Out of the state, he went from sand trap to sand trap to this. 
Yeah, what a way to end the Masters. After going from bunker to bunker, you got that incredible roll. Perfect. Shot an eight under 64 yesterday, but there's your winner. Scheffler's lead was just too big for anybody to catch him, so he's putting on a green jacket. He finished with a double bogey, but who cares? He finished, he wins, and his first major victory. So here's your final leaderboard. There's Scheffler at 278 minus 10. Three-stroke win over Rory McIlroy. Put on a great show in the final round. Then here's Cameron Smith. I think that was Ursula's favorite golfer of the weekend. Cameron Smith with the uh, with the hair. Yeah, he the mullet. Five under. And then Shane Lowry and Kyle Demerakawa. I was rooting for him. You were rooting for him? But that McIlroy That was a good shot. shot and then the, the, his partner also did the same hole. Did the same yeah. hole so out of the bunker. Amazing yeah. stuff. So, and a Texan wins it. So there you go. Yeah, you're 25 years old. Yeah. Finding the perfect pup is a lot like dating, according to one dog trainer. <laughs> Tips to help you find your next pet coming up in the next half hour. Do they work for the date? Nearly 30% of popular baby formula brands are sold out across the country. What some stores are doing in order to serve as many customers as they can. Have you received your property appraisal yet? Uh-uh. They were <laughs> mailed out and posted online last week. If the increase was more than you were expecting and you don't agree, your next step might be protesting. Coming up today at 5, 12 in your size, Marilyn Mortz is going to show you the process of appealing your appraisal and explains how it has become a little more convenient. We want to bring you the latest in the war in Ukraine. The eastern part of that country now bracing for attacks as Russian troops mass in the region. Ukrainian President Zelensky says that tens of thousands of troops are already at standby to fight back. They're going to defend their country. But Ukrainian officials are asking for military help to bolster their defenses. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. New satellite images show an eight-mile-long Russian military convoy headed toward Ukraine's second-largest city, Kharkiv, with Russian forces now zeroing in on the eastern part of the country. Pulling out of Kiev doesn't mean that the war is over. They just changed the strategy. They're in the east and the south of the country extremely active. Russia putting a new commander in charge of the war in Ukraine, General Alexander Dvornikov, who led Russian forces in Syria, a campaign where human rights investigators say Russian forces deliberately targeted civilian populations and destroyed cities. Ukrainian President Zelensky saying his troops are ready, that they can even use more missiles against us, even more aerial bombs. But we're preparing for all that action. We will respond. Though Ukrainian officials are calling for more military aid. We cannot defend our country with the fists. We need weapons to defend our country. A growing number of atrocities against civilians are being reported, including last week's attack on a train station in the eastern city of Krematorsk, which killed 57 people, including five children. These are mass atrocities. These are war crimes. These are shocking and brutal acts that are completely unacceptable. The bottom line is this. There must be accountability. Russian air assaults continuing to hammer Odessa, Kharkiv, and Mariupol. These four friends escaping the besieged port city where they had been trapped for weeks. Living in this destroyed apartment without consistent food, water, or communications with the outside world. 32-year-old Artem saying he doesn't understand how they managed to survive. Russia has agreed to open nine humanitarian corridors today to help innocent civilians escape the country, though in previous weeks, other corridors have come under attack by Russian forces. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Today, the White House is pushing gun control measures. CNN reporting that President Biden's proposed reforms are focused on regulating so-called ghost guns. People can put them together at home from kits, so they're hard to trace or regulate. Classifying some of the parts as firearms would change all that. President Biden says he also wants Congress to mandate background checks for all gun sales, ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, allowing gun makers to be found liable if their products are used in a crime. Today, the president is also expected to name his pick to lead the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. An official says the nominee is former U.S. Attorney Steve Detterback. People who do not identify as male or female can now make it official on a form of identification. The State Department will now list X as a mark on its U.S. passports. This designation is defined as 
unspecified or another gender identity. This makes the Department of State the first governmental agency to make this offer on a document. Officials say they did research with a diverse group, including those in the LGBTQ plus community before making the change. More information available right now about this on travel.slate, rather travel.state.gov slash gender. Outside with live cam, the good news is there's some humidity, the temperatures are cool, might have some rain that would really help fight those fires over there at Camp Bullis. Absolutely, and even some rain fell on Camp Bullis late last night. So again, the humidity is high, you can feel it. But I feel like the humidity is tempting us, right? Because it's really not gonna amount to much as far as rain uh, goes. We do have a chance for isolated showers and storms over the next 36 hours or so, but isolated being the key word there. It's also cloudy in San Antonio, but you can see that skies are starting to clear uh, as across the hill country, we're looking at completely sunny skies and out west it's totally sunny in Del Rio. A closer view here at 73 in San Antonio, 73 in Converse, 71 in Bulverde, 77 in Castroville, 76 in Hondo and there's that clearing line knocking on the door. Bernie, you're going to start to see some sun here soon. Fair Oaks Ranch, you're going to start to see some sun and then of course Hondo and Castroville starting to see some sun as well and in San Antonio we'll see sun uh, likely in the next couple of hours or so. So observed rainfall from that road storm that moved through areas in northern uh, Bear County. Some areas got some good rain like Shavano Park, more than an inch of rain. Not so the case at the airport where less than a quarter of an inch fell, almost a quarter of an inch, more than a quarter of an inch in Selma and at JBSA Camp Bullis, a few hundredths of an inch of rain. But again, the humidity helping uh, those firefighters fight that fire right now. Now, the reason I'm showing you this in order in addition to showing rainfall amounts is that this kind of isolated thunderstorm activity is what we can expect over the next 36 hours or so. And just like last night, that storm did become severe and produce some quarter sized hail. That's going to be a possibility, especially tomorrow in the afternoon. Uh, that's when we have best rain chances or tomorrow and in the afternoon, some of those could be strong or severe, but even best rain chances still only 30%. So again, you take the good where you can get it and tomorrow we do have that chance for rain. So coming up, we'll talk about that more in detail. I'll show you the future cast too and an update on the aquifer and the pollen count. Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. Some stories, uh, rather some stores now rationing their supplies of baby formula as a shortage continues. In fact, it's getting worse in some communities. Walgreens now limiting shoppers to three infant and toddler formula products per transaction. A recent review of supplies at 11,000 stores indicates that nearly 30% of popular baby formula brands may be sold out. Here in San Antonio, out of stock rates for certain formulas are even higher than that, well above 50%. Part of the problem stems from an Abbott Nutrition recall back in February for select lots of Similac and other formulas. Manufacturers, though, ramping up production to make up the difference. They admit it may take weeks for them to catch up, though. There's never been a better time to welcome a special somebody into your circle today because today just happens to be National Pet Day. What you should keep in mind if you're looking to adopt a new dog or cat. Tonight, today might be a good day to bring home a furry friend because it's it, National Pet Day. Wow, with tips to find your perfect pet. Here's ABC's Will Gans. From golden retriever to goldfish, there's a pet out there for everyone. Archie and I are in coordinated outfits just for you, Michael, and this high holy holiday, National Pet Day. The most important day of the year. Celebrity dog trainer Michael Hill has helped place countless pups into their forever homes. Finding the perfect pooch, he says, is a lot like dating. First of all, just actual compatibility. So similar interests, similar lifestyles, similar kind of temperament and personality, but then there's also just natural chemistry. So if you're looking to enter the doggy dating pool, the big things to consider, the dog's size. So the size of a dog, you might love a Great Dane, but if you can't physically hold on to them or pick them up, that could be a problem. Then there's activity level. The most popular breed this year, Labrador Retriever, 
pretty different from the second most popular, French Bulldog, a breed more prone to health issues. Lindsay is somebody who is an adult professional, doesn't have kids, and knew what she was taking on. And so I think that's a great example of how fulfilling it can be to take on a rescue dog, especially with some special needs. Michael also says to consider the job the breed was naturally intended to do. Is going to change how the dog um, or affect how the dog learns and how they interact with their environment. And then there's the dog's age. The prospective home was, you know, a woman in her 70s who's retired and living by herself. Michael finding Gail not a puppy, but a four-year-old pointer named Lola. Gail and Lola are each other's world now. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Looking outside with live cam, a lot of clouds out there, and these are... Teasers. That's yeah. what I'm yeah. calling this. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it, it ain't uh, raining. It looks like it wants to rain, yeah. right? But that you bring up a great point there, Ursula. We won't have all of the ingredients for rain until tomorrow. And even then, our chance for showers and storms is only 30% for your Tuesday. And the aquifer could really use some rain. This is a look at the aquifer level from the beginning of the year. And you can see that this spring, we have just seen that aquifer level tank. We're now starting to see the level below stage two water uh, restrictions and so although we're technically still in stage one I would expect us to enter that stage two at least in the coming days so we'll keep you updated of course when that happens it'll be on uh, online on ksat.com and on air we could also use some rain to wash out the oak the oak is high in today's pollen count past 5,000 and molds not too great either moderate at 910 coming up details on the isolated chance for storms mainly tomorrow Yeah, you know, we're, I don't know that we're in a mood to be teased <laughs> with those clouds. And I don't like the term splash and dash showers either because we need something a lot more substantial. We absolutely do. You know, extreme drought is around and the aquifer is falling. We could use some widespread rain, but if I could wish that into existence, <laughs> I would. Instead, I got to give it to you. Can you fingers and get it, get it to you? Right? Like that? No. Nope, didn't happen. No, no. sorry. All right. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll give you the honest forecast here. We are going to have some rain over the next 36 hours. It's just going to be isolated, all right? And some of the storms that develop could become strong or severe. Outside right now, it's still cloudy. It's 73 degrees. The humidity is very high. These clouds, though, are going to clear out for the rest of the afternoon, and we're going to have plenty of sun through the remainder of the day and a few hours to see temperature is warm. But again, that humidity very high outside. It is one of the ingredients for rain, that low level humidity. Dew points are in the upper 60s, close to the top of the scale. And then off to the west, there's that Texas dry line, that West Texas dry line. And storms that develop along this dry line are often finicky, isolated, but they can become potent. And so as that dry line pushes off to the east, especially tomorrow afternoon, that's when we're gonna be on the lookout for some isolated severe storms. Visible satellite though, showing those clouds and that clearing line, which is getting closer and closer to San Antonio. We're starting to see mostly sunny skies in Bandera and Bernie, and the skies are parting in Hondo. That clearing line will be pushing into San Antonio here within the next couple of hours, and we're gonna see plenty of sun. You can see that in the future cast by 5 p.m. Skies should be sunny. And so for the rest of the day, here's what you can expect. Clearing skies this afternoon will be in the 80s this afternoon with a high temperature right in the mid 80s, so close to 86 degrees. Sun's going to set close to 8 and it's going to be a mild evening in the 70s and 80s. South winds for the remainder of the day breezy 10 to 15 miles per hour. Let's transition and talk about the potential for some isolated storms tomorrow. Looking at the future cast early tomorrow morning, 
there is a chance for, as Ursula said, splash and dash showers. All right. In the morning hours, the morning commute could be damp in spots, and we'll be monitoring these showers carefully to see if they have enough oomph to become storms. But then as we head into the middle part of the day, we're going to see skies clear and temperatures are going to warm up. We'll be in the 90s tomorrow afternoon. But as skies clear, that dry line is going to get closer and it could end up sparking off some isolated thunderstorms around San Antonio, up into the hill country and up across the I-35 corridor. Don't pay close attention to where this puts the storms because again, this storm could be anywhere around the KSAT 12 viewing area. And notice the time frame too, right around the time of the evening commute, we could have some isolated storms. The chance for rain, 30%. So it's not a great chance, but the chance is there. And if a storm develops, it will become severe. Isolated risk for severe storms and wherever you see this light pink color that does include San Antonio, storms that develop tomorrow could produce some hail and some gusty winds. But it becomes more scattered and more likely the further north you go, up toward Austin, out toward Bryan College Station, with numerous severe storms, likely across areas in the DFW, uh, region all the way up to Oklahoma City and up to Kansas City as well. So once again, we are on the tail end of the storm chance here in San Antonio. So not great chances for rain, but if one happens, it will become severe and you can bet that we are going to be on top of it. 93 degrees for the high temperature tomorrow, so quite a bit warmer than today. And then Wednesday, we're going to have low humidity on Wednesday and hot temperatures. It's going to be in the mid 90s on Wednesday. Low humidity, windy conditions, hot weather, that is fire weather, fire danger. So we have seen a few big brush fires around San Antonio this spring, and we have to be careful and try to avoid any kind of outdoor burning, especially on Wednesday, and make sure to dispose of cigarettes properly, and you know the drill by this point. So we'll be watching that carefully as well. Then as we head into Easter weekend, it's going to be warm and humid. In fact, hot and humid on Saturday. Saturday and Sunday. Easter Sunday, we're forecasting a high of 93. So I hope you picked your Easter outfit with short sleeves because it's going to be a hot one. Ursula, David. Thank you, Sarah. A new movie not only nabbed the top spot at the box office, it broke two records in the process. The details are coming up. Seven strangers from different backgrounds banding together while serving community service sentences. We're going to take a look at the show that could have you rooting for the bad guys. A new series aims to have you rooting for the bad guys, but it's okay, they're not that bad. CNN's David Daniel has a look at the outlaws. You will repay your debt to society by working the number of hours mandated by the court. Seven strangers band together through a community service sentence in The Outlaws. You've got your right-wing blowhard, left-wing militant, celebrity chomps, shifty old-timer, and whatever the hell he is. We felt like we were living in very divided times, politically and socially, and that, you know, we wanted to see how we could take these very disparate people and throw them together, clash them together, and then let them find common ground. What type am I? It's a bad boy. What type are you? Studio Asian good girl. For my character, he wasn't necessarily making decisions just for himself. Um, he was making them for, you know, the people that he's looking after and the people he cares for. Bloody hell! You're not considering keeping this money. We found it. We're entitled to it. Sorry, are you citing the legal precedent, finders, keepers, losers, weepers? It's not when they're doing the right thing, because uh, they're not superheroes. They're uh, they're flawed, inhuman, and we all are. We could use this money to do something real. We're standing here in a moment where everything about our lives could change. Amen. Over time, we did start to feel like this kind of ragtag group of, of outsiders uh, in real life as much as, as on screen. Well, we're all definitely going to jail. Group hug. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
Sonic the Hedgehog 2 stormed out of the gate with $71 million in its debut. That's more than the first Sonic film's debut in 2020. And it set opening weekend records for Jim Carrey and video game adaptations. More of us only managed one weekend atop the chart. It fell to second on ticket sales of $10 million. The Lost City checking in at number three. It picked up $9.2 million. Ambulance opened in fourth place with only $8.7 million. That's the lowest debut of director Michael Bay's career. And The Batman fell to fifth place, but made another $6.5 million. So it now stands at $395 million bucks in the U.S. Two more ladies able to recover from a fun fiesta, Jen and Fiona. <laughs> Not without a lot of sleep <laughs> over the weekend, I tell yes. you that. Very and restful now, weekend. Easter is on the way. Yes, and we have some sweet treats from Glamorous Cakes. Amaris Garcia is here to share uh, one of the goodies you have Hi. on your menu. Hi. Yeah, so um, today we're going to be making a little carrot cake, cupcake. We're just going to go and do a dollop of pink frosting and then go in with our orange frosting and just do a little carrot. And then we're going to just make cute little leaves with our green frosting. Oh, so Super simple, simple and cute for the kids. Festive. You make that look so easy. <laughs> Plus, these, these are all vegan, by the way. Uh, but if you're looking for something fun to do with the family, Pixar Putt is open. And let me tell you, it is a great time. I went and gave it a try and all the different courses. So if you love Pixar, you'll love this experience. All right, and with Easter coming up, folks may be wanting a pet. And Austin from Happy Hops is here. What do folks need to know about rabbits? So a lot of the products in pet stores marketed towards bunnies, including cages and food, might not actually be bunny safe. So we're excited to talk about what products you can get for your bunny that are good to go and which ones we should be avoiding. Because you need to be ready for this commitment, right? Absolutely. It is a 10 to 12 year commitment for your indoor house rabbit. Okay. Um, it's a lot going on with them. Thank you so much. It's also National Pet Day, so we want to see your photos. That and much more coming up on SA Live. Skies will be clearing this afternoon, 86 for the high temperature. Tomorrow we'll start off with some isolated showers and then in the afternoon, isolated storms, some of which could become severe. Now, uh, although we may hear for the chance of rain, the keyword there is isolated. So it's not going to help us out where the drought is concerned, unfortunately. Then fire danger on Wednesday with windy and hot conditions. Highs will be in the mid 90s on Wednesday. And speaking of the 90s, Easter weekend, Highs are going to be in the 90s. It's going to be humid too, so it may even feel closer to 100 on the weekend because of high humidity. Ouch. Thank you, Sarah. Speaking of Easter weekend, we've got cupcakes and we've got bunnies on SA Live. Perfect for Easter. Starts right now. We're using the music of the guitar to make it through the bridge. Pixar Pod has taken over downtown. We're giving you a sneak peek. Oh. And this Easter surprise will be a big hit. We're going to show you what's inside today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hello and happy Manic Monday. What a better way <laughs> to kick off the week than with some delicious and incredibly cute sweets. Yay. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorostiza. I'm Jen Tobias Stresky filling in for Mike. We're counting down to Easter. I think a lot of kids have a four-day week, right? right? Yes. yes, for school. And today's also National Pet Day, so we want to see some maybe photos, maybe the last pic you took of your animal, whatever it is. Yes, what is the last picture you took of your pet? Share it at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see your pet a little later on in the show. All right, well, the Easter Bunny is heading to town soon, and whether you need some ideas for desserts or would rather have someone else do it all, you know, kind of do all the work, you know, our <laughs> next guest can help. Yes, Amaris Garcia, owner of Glamorous Cakes, is here, and you have some great Hi. sweet treats for us today. Uh, one thing you're offering is cupcakes. We saw those at the top of the show. Yes, so I have my festive little chicky Easter cupcakes, um, just really colorful and cute for the kids and for the holiday. Um, I also have my little breakable bunny butts in the front there. <laughs> so cute. Super fun. And then DIY <laughs> cookie kits also on the far left. And you're going to show us how to create these cupcake creations here that you did, right? Yes. So today we're going to make a chicky cupcake, the one in the top front. 
Um, so first, I'm going to pipe a little ring around my cupcake. It doesn't have to be thick, just however you can get it on there. I have a bowl of sprinkles. I'm just gonna roll it in the sprinkles, kind of covers it like that. Um, and then once I do that, I'm going to grab my yellow piping bag and I'm just gonna do two dollops of frosting. And that's supposed to be the chick body. And then I just do so little eyes and then little feet for the chick. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just cute. And then a little beak, and that's it. Okay, and then the Let me see your chick. Okay, that's really, oh, <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Mine's a little smaller. It, honestly, <laughs> however you can do it, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, my buttercream. Okay, yeah, it's a little warm this in Texas here, y'all. So you know, we all know what butter this cream. is about. Oh, that's how you know it's 100% butter. It's not shortening, so it's I know, right, better. There you go. And then I need a nose. I lo thank you for holding it up. Okay, wait, and then the And then just eyes. the two little eyes, yeah, and then you're done. And then we're done. Okay. Oh, this guy looks kind of silly. Uh, oh now my your, gosh. your desserts are very different um, because they're vegan, correct? Yes. So everything is vegan, and by vegan <laughs> we mean no animal products. Um, so no dairy, no eggs, no honey, no um, confectioner's glaze, other like hidden ingredients with animal products in them. You can always Google just to make sure if you're not sure. Got it. And you do DIY cookie kits as well, right? Yes. So we also have a DIY cookie kit on our Easter menu. Um, it includes a half dozen or a full dozen of unfrosted Easter cookies and then a coordinated colored royal icing to decorate mm. the cookies along with a little bit of sprinkles. Love that. And okay. how long have you been baking uh, vegan ba baked goods? So we're coming on about two years now with Glamorous Cakes. My vegan baking journey started about a little over two years ago, but I still just say two years. <laughs> Okay. Got it. And if people want to order for Easter, do, when do they have to get their orders in by? So orders close tonight, um, April 11th, Monday. If you want to order, you can message us um, at Glamorous Cakes on Instagram or Facebook. You can also text us. Um, our contact numbers on our website, on all our social medias. It's really easy to find. And then just let us know, let us know like what item you were inquiring about, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. And there's even a fun kind of Easter surprise, right? We mentioned this a little bit earlier yeah. with, and it comes with a little, a little hammer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so those are our breakable bunny butts. It's um, a vegan white chocolate shell made to look like a bunny butt. And um, <laughs> it can be filled with, you know, custom gifts. Um, right now we have our standard one, which is filled with a vegan chocolate bunny, along with other like cute little candies and trinkets and toys. But you can get um, custom, you know, items filled inside of it. Personal pictures, jewelry, you know, That's presents. So awesome. Yeah, so it's you can super customize cool. it. Yeah, and it's a fun little activity surprise. Kids love it. Adults love it. Like it's really universal. Nice. And this kind of works throughout the year, right? Yeah. So I did one for Valentine's Day as well. That was a heart. I just flip around the mold. So I love it. it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Right, I'm gonna try to. You said use all Three, your strength. Three, yes. two, one, go. You have to. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, it's yeah. tempered. It's oh, gonna so make you oh, oh look, look inside. Oh, oh, oh look the at that. Again, you can customize and for the anybody. whole thing's edible, right? Yes, it's all edible. <laughs> That's the gift that keeps hot and giving. And we saw that beautiful cake too earlier. So you'll do custom cakes, uh, cupcakes, any occasion? People just have to inquire? Of course, yeah. Any occasion, um, we basically do anything. If you can think about it, don't be shy to ask. Okay. And you have an event this Friday? Yes, we have an event this Friday at Jefferson's Bodega. It's an all vegan event. The last event we have for the Lent season, so it's our Meatless Fridays event. Um, it's 5 to 9 p.m. We're going to have our Mango Nada cupcakes. This Ooh. is the last time you'll see them before Fiesta next year, so you might want to stop by. <laughs> okay, all right. And you were recently featured in SA Magazine, right? Yes, last November we were featured in the um, article for San Antonio's growing vegan scene with a lot of other local vegan businesses. See, that's awesome. What do you think yeah. it is about the vegan movement here in San Antonio? I feel like it's growing, right? I think it's growing because there's a lot more vegan options readily available to everyone across the U.S. now and just the world. So it's becoming, um, I don't want to say a fad, but it's easier to catch on and jump on the train. So that's why, yeah, Got it's it. coming a long way. Well, okay. I'm going to give this a try here. All mm. right. Now, for more information, of course, all you have to do is head to our website, mm. salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Don't forget the event this Friday, 5 to 9 p.m. at the Jefferson Bodega. 
at 1005 Donaldson Avenue. And if you need to get those Easter orders in, the deadline is tonight. Tonight. Yes, for more information, just go to our website, salive.com, and click the Ask Scene on SA Live tab. We have all the information you need. Thank you so much, Amaris. Of course. Well, if you're looking for a terrific time <laughs> and family outing with a competitive twist, we can help steer you on course. Yes, for sure, Fiona. <laughs> Today we give you a sneak peek at Pixar Putt. Take a look. Pixar Putt has taken over downtown, located right in front of the Frost Tower. It's fun for the entire family, some good friendly competition. Right now I'm at the Brave course here, but there's a ton to choose from. From A Bug's Life, to Toy Story, to Finding Nemo. Cute, huh? I am joined now by Sydney Still, the project manager here at Pixar Putt. This is so exciting for San Antonio. Thank you, guys you for here. coming down. I'm so happy to be here. Everyone's excited that I've talked to about it, my friends, my family, my kiddos, uh, but this is fun for everybody, right? Absolutely, absolutely. This is really meant for kids young and old, uh -huh. um, young at heart as well. Yes. Um, I always tell people don't be surprised that these really fun, inviting looking pieces are actually really challenging to play. Good to know. So a fun challenge, like you said, a friendly competition. Absolutely. <laughs> so we recommend people in groups of two to four to come down and try to beat each other's score. Um, usually people can beat me because I'm a terrible <laughs> mini golf player. Um, so I'm hoping that you're a better player than I am. We'll see, right? We'll put it to the test. <laughs> we'll put it to the test. But that's the fun part about it is that friendly competition, whether it's a date or a girls trip or just the whole family coming out, right? Yeah. How long does it take? It takes about an hour and a half to play, but this has been a really fun um, way for people to get outside wow. and have some fun. Yes, yes, the weather's perfect, and you will be here. This Pixar Pet will be here until when? May 15th. May 15th. You have plenty of time, but the weather's perfect right now, this month, too. So come on out here, because it's underway. Now, I think we're going to put our skills to the test. Which one would you like to try first? <laughs> let's, um, let's try Ratatouille. Okay. Okay, so we're at Ratatouille right now, and this looks really fun but it's actually really challenging, right? It's Cindy? incredibly challenging. <laughs> Tell me how this works here. So on every hole, you'll see a little decal, um, and this is your starting position. So we're gonna start from this location. We're gonna try, <laughs> try being the keyword to move our way all the way around and come back into um, our hole here. All right, we'll give this a try. Okay, now we're at the Luca course, and as you can see, this too is challenging because you have to go uphill here through the little town and then eventually make it through. Let's see if we can do it. Nice. Oh! Perfect. Where is he? Oh, he is. wow. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my goodness! You're kidding! Oh. Oh. There you go. I've had such a great time. That was here. so much fun. Sydney, uh, Thank you for coming thanks out. For having me. A fun, friendly competition, indeed. And sometimes luck is on your side. <laughs> We're here. Okay, so it's here again. Pixar Pet will be here in the heart of downtown until May 15. Correct. Right? Correct. And where can they go for more information? For more information, you can visit pixarpet.com. Thanks for coming out. Sydney. Should we go again? Another round? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Oh, it was so fun. <laughs> Definitely a good time now. Oh, great memories. Yes, you yes. Know? And they do recommend to make reservations. You can make a reservation, which obviously will make it easier for planning. There's a parking garage right around the corner, so you can get it all set up and definitely have a great time. All right. For more information on Pixar Putt, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Still ahead on SA Live. They might seem like a great gift, but they're a lifelong commitment. What one rescue wants you to know about adopting rabbits. And we're checking out Easter brunch at a popular restaurant with a twist on an omelet.